Hello and welcome back to another instalment of our Portuguese barn conversion series. It is absolutely beautiful weather here in central Portugal. It feels like on the vlogs we're alternating between a jumper and a woolly hat and t-shirt and shorts. It's just crazy weather. It is night and day. Some days it's so cold. Yesterday I was completely suited and booted and today I'm in a t-shirt and I'm actually quite hot and it's the morning time so what's it gonna be like in a bit? But we've got plenty to get on with and I can't wait to work outside in the beautiful sun. We're the Indie Project, B and Theo and we've been living and traveling the world in vans for the past six years. We're currently renovating an abandoned store own barn in Portugal to turn into a beautiful tiny home for us and our cats Gingy Bear and Fernando. Follow our journey from the very beginning as we document the whole process of creating an off-grid home. Good morning from sunny Portugal. Don't you just feel great when the sun's out? It makes me feel energized. I just want to bounce out of bed and get stuck in with the work and it really feels like spring has arrived. I know every time there's a sunny day, we're like, oh, spring's here now. And then it like rains the next day or it's really cold, but I really think it's here. The flowers are out, the birds are singing, the sun is so warm and beautiful, and it's just a glimpse of what's to come. Slow it down. Everyone's been so Now, as you saw in last week's video, which actually was only yesterday, <laughs> we didn't get to finish all of the sanding of the beams because we had to take Gingy to an emergency appointment at the vets because of what happened to her leg. So that means that we really need to knuckle down and get these beams done today because we want to get them finished. We've only got about, I think, four left to do. And then I can paint them with the insecticide and then Project Mezzanine is a go. Everyone's been keeping time But I can see the shoes B has been tackling this sanding on her own, but I'm gonna jump in right now and help her to get it done twice as quick because of what happened yesterday. She didn't manage to get it done and actually to sand all of these beams that we've got for the mezzanine is actually gonna take about 10 hours. So it's a long, slow process, but it's so worth it to bring out that beautiful grain in the chestnut. We've decided to be super civilized, lay out a blanket in a nice spot on the land and have our lunch outside in the sun. We don't get to do this very often. And how nice is this? And how epic is this food? This is bees, jacket potato, all the vegetables under the sun, a tahini dressing and balsamic glaze. Just as I was about to actually start eating, Theo goes, let me just interview you for a second. So I wanted to actually say, it's so lovely to sit out here. We feel like we're making epic progress on the build and I really want to stay here all day. It's very tempting, but we've got to continue as we mean to go on. You're definitely going to want to nap after that. I know, it's a, it's, it looks more than it is. It's a lot of cabbage. Why does my food look incredibly basic now? I've got a jacket, <laughs> tuna and sweet corn, but it just looks so sparse compared to bees but I'm going to enjoy it. I love this meal. If I help you up, will you lead me through the night? Will you take my heart? Can you promise me an afterlife? I don't think it gets much better than this. It's just wonderful to sit here on our land on a lovely spring day, enjoying some nice food, a beautiful view, and knowing that we're getting further and further on building our house. It, it just feels epic. And now I'm just waiting for the chickens to descend because as soon as they know we've got food, <laughs> they're gonna be over here like a shot. If I help you up, will you lead me through the night? Will you take my heart? Can you promise me an afterlife? Oh, when we lose our time. 
the coffee must have just kicked in that I had at eight o'clock this morning because I'm suddenly raring to go. We've done all the sanding of the, was it 12 beams? 12 plus the two big ones. Okay, so the 14 beams are sanded and the next task is to paint them with the insecticide that I used a couple of videos back to paint these beams above me right here. And it basically will kill anything off, not that there's anything in them, and prevent anything from trying to make a house a nice house life <laughs> in our beams. So I'm gonna paint that on. It's really not a very pleasant task. I have to wear the big mask and it stinks even with the mask on. So I am always the one who gets stuck with this job. I did the whole roof. I'm still the one who gets stuck with insecticide. And the whole mezzanine I'm and the whole roof. It's still me. <laughs> give you an update on Gingy Bear because I know we had to leave the last video on a cliffhanger with her because we're going to the vets and now it's the next day. It's been over 12 hours and I can say that Gingy is on the mend. She's doing so well. We got to the vets, the vet checked her over. She was growling, hissing, literally spitting, you know, when a cat is super duper angry because she was in so much pain and the vet couldn't see it for a while and she discovered that it was her ankle that was causing her this grief and she noticed there was a wound there so she cut the fur, discovered this wound, had to get another nurse involved so they could squeeze out uh, the infection which was incredibly distressing for Gingy. She was writhing around in a lot of pain and she did end up releasing her bladder which was just so sad to see. I'm standing there and I just felt really guilty that she was going through all of this pain and there was nothing I could do. Like, I knew the vet would obviously give her painkillers after they discovered what was going on but to see that at the time it was just really horrible and they discovered what was wrong with her. There was a wound on her ankle. I suspected it could have been from a cat aka Fernando because he can be quite boisterous with her. The vet said that she cut herself on a tree or something. there was just too many different variables to what it could have been. Either way she had an antibiotic jab, she had a painkiller jab and she's now on antibiotics for six days and painkillers for four days and also a diuretic so me and Gingy have been staying in the van together so she can have a break from Fernando and heal well. She also can't go outside, you might be able to hear her scratching on her favourite cupboard which is her food cupboard. She has been really spoiled, she's had like three cat sachets in the last 12 hours but I'm happy to say she's sitting up a lot more normally than yesterday and it's really lovely to see her moving around again. Hey look at you! Oh. She's so much happier. The painkillers are obviously working, which is fantastic. It's amazing to see how much she's actually bounced back since yesterday. So I got about 45 minutes before sunset, so I thought I'd get a little bit of strimming done and set up my new mulching blade that isn't new at all. I bought this in the summer and you're not allowed to use it in the summer because it's a metal blade and it can cause a fire. So I'm taking it out on its debut spin, <laughs> which I'm quite excited about. That's not the only thing getting a debut today, other than your knee. Check out this knee. <laughs> I definitely need a patch, this but... This isn't that kind of channel, mate. <laughs> in Portugal, there's currently a lockdown and we can't buy clothes or anything like that. Although I am wearing a brand new hoodie that is our own with our nice new logo that B designed. But you can't buy clothes, you can only go out and buy food and DIY things. You know, things like mulching blades and helmets. So, <laughs> but I got my new helmet, I'm excited to try this out. Oh. I feel like a proper warrior. You look the part. Hello. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and then these go in. And now we can't hear me, it's glorious. I basically can't hear anything and it's brilliant. <laughs> work but I'm so happy we've uncovered this beautiful cork tree there's still a lot of work to be done around the back side of it but it's finally got room to breathe 
and it's gorgeous and in Portugal cork trees are protected and in the summer this will provide a lot of shade for our house it's in the perfect location it's just it's so nice to look from the veranda straight onto this beautiful cork oak. It's a corker. <laughs> so it's currently Bee's birthday today and I asked her what's one thing that you want to do and to my dismay she said <laughs> I want to jump in the lake and you're coming with me and so I'm just sitting in the truck next to the lake absolutely terrified because there's a really cold breeze today the water is going to be freezing and I'm just panicking a little bit and I think it's a very a very silly idea It'll but fine. I'm going to go through with it because it's her birthday and that's what she wants but yeah I think I'm going to regret this. I wanted to start my 32nd year on this earth with a rebirth <laughs> in the coldest lake that we know because I just want to feel fresh and ready for a whole new year and this is going to be very invigorating, trust me. And can we just appreciate how beautiful she looks in this dress? Got to look good on my birthday, even though I'm going to be getting changed out of it in about 30 seconds. Right, let's go. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. No stalling, you've got to go in. I know you're scared. I wish you guys could see his face right now. <laughs> guys, I'm not going to lie. I'm panicking. I'm trying to stay strong. Oh, she's walking up to the car. Right, I gotta go. I can see through all the faces Telling me to find my place And I'm so close that I can taste it on my tongue <laughs> Tell the king he's overthrown <laughs> From where the river's flown Underneath the water All over the time Never turn, never turn <laughs> What's inside can't be stopped Oh my god <laughs> I need to get the shoulder I need to get the shoulder You sound like you're enjoying it. I am. They're gonna swim. That was ridiculously cold, but I do feel invigorated. Like my skin just feels so nice. And B went in there a second time. I just went in, splashed right to my neck, and then was straight out again. I got a lot of love about this robe last time <laughs> you guys saw it in the video, so I thought I'd show you how stylish I look. It goes all the way down to the knee. You know what I mean? Just because I'm jumping in a lake doesn't mean I can't look like I'm on fashion week. <laughs> I'm feeling wonderfully refreshed and ready to sit in the sun and read some magazines that I've got saved up on my phone specifically for this purpose on the Readly app who have kindly sponsored today's video. Now Readly is a magazine subscription service where you have access to thousands of different magazines and I really enjoy being able to download them and read them offline whenever I want. At the moment self-building design is my favourite magazine because as you know we're building our own house so it's a really great source of information for me and inspiration. I love being able to read up and research different places and activities across Portugal in travel magazines such as National Geographic Travel. I've got a lot of places ready to visit in the future. Living in such a small space means that having all these magazines as digital copies rather than physical items prevents them from cluttering up our space. I can highlight different pages that pique my interest and also being able to double tap and zoom in on the magazines is really helpful. It's not just all about home and stuff, there are travel magazines, lifestyle, DIY, literally anything to suit anyone. So if you want to check out Readly, at the moment they've got a fantastic offer of six weeks free trial and then it's only $7.99 a month. There's no contracts you can cancel at any time. We've got a link in the description for you to take that offer up. So I really hope you enjoy it and I'm going to enjoy my day. <laughs> May have picked up a new tour. <laughs> it's getting ridiculous. But my other one just felt unsafe. So I picked up a new uh, mitosaur and this is gonna really help us because we've got a lot of work we need to do with the mitosaur. And as I said, the other one is just pure dangerous. Oh, it's awful. It's, <laughs> it's really sketchy. And even when it's on zero, it doesn't seem to cut straight anymore. 
I could have brought a new blade for it, but it wouldn't have helped all the other problems. So we've gone and got ourselves a nice new miter saw, which as I said, is gonna help us because we've got so many things to do, like the floorboards. Know this, we've got a house to build. <laughs> <laughs> we've got the floorboards to cut, we've got the mezzanine beams to cut, we've got all the furniture to build for the inside of the house, we've got the kitchen. So this is gonna come in really useful, but I'm not looking forward to setting these tools up. table saw is set up and it was a lot easier than I planned so I'm hopeful that this miter saw is going to be just as easy. You know why it was a lot easier? Because you did it. Exactly. <laughs> I, was I screwed the bolts together and you basically told me what to do and we're just good. a dream team really aren't we? Yeah we are. But yeah I'm excited to get this out. Me too. Everything's set up and I am dreaming of the day that all of this can be in its nice own area, undercover, in my own little workshop, but obviously I need to get the barn finished, but it's kind of counterproductive because it would be nice to have that wall I was building the barn, but <laughs> we need to press on so that will have to wait, but for now the weather's good so I can have a lovely workshop under the stars I was going to say. <laughs> I'm not going to be working at night. <laughs> Under the sun and it's just, oh, it's so warm today. It's beautiful. And I've got some leftover bits of chestnut that I'm going to rip down now and attempt to build my first ever window frame. And I'm going to build the window from start to finish that goes in the back of our house. So exciting times. Theo's just measuring up the outside of where the window is going to be going that he's building today. And it's all a little bit skew if because obviously it's natural stone. Hey. <laughs> it's natural stone. It's not perfect. So it's going to be an interesting experience, especially for his first window. Why do some think that's easy, hey? <laughs> 51 by 14 and a half. Okay. Should give us a little bit of wiggle room I don't want too much how wide do you think the actual window bit's going to be the glass <laughs> four about, centimeters about the size of my fingernail <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna sit here maybe I should just make it 14 yeah then it's gonna be a fair gap either side but I don't want to build it and it not fit it's such a tiny little space isn't it 14 so what did I say? 50... 51. 51. So I've just ripped down all of the wood that I need so far for the window frame and it's really nice to work with. It's nice dry chestnut that's left over from the build so I might as well utilise it. And now we can finally see how big our glass is going to be. <laughs> it's really skinny but I can still fit an arrow through there which is always useful. Uh, I'd have to smash the glass first. <laughs> Totally defeats the point. <laughs> but we're thinking maybe in the future or maybe we can get someone to make us some nice stained glass to go in there. That would look really cool. And I'm loving this table saw and miter saw combo. It's just a dream out here in the sun working. I know I'm going to get a tan after today, but it's just so nice to work with. To be able to rip your own material down and get the exact measurements that you want is it's just perfect. So now I'm going to move on to something that's called a half lap and I sound like I know what I'm doing but I've never done a half lap before. I've never done any joinery really before so this is why I'm so excited to build the window and, and actually learn something. So the half lap is basically you cut away half the material 
on one part of the wood and half on the other and they lock together and it creates a really solid join. So I did a quick test just to dial in all of the measurements and make sure it's all correct. And now I'm ready to, to do the half lap and cut all the excess away. I'm gonna do it all on the table saw. So we'll see how this works out. Let's do it. Whilst Theo's cutting all those pieces of wood, I wanted to <laughs> show you a little discovery that I made earlier. I spotted Frenchie, one of our chickens, constantly running out of the coop every time I opened it in the morning, all the way down to the building site. And I had a sneaking suspicion she was up to something. And let me show you what she was up to. Nestled away in this bush behind the sand is seven eggs, which is actually perfect timing because uh, I ran out of eggs and I really wanted a fried egg sandwich for lunch, so that's amazing. I am so stoked of how my half laps have turned out. For my first ever try, they've turned out pretty good and I'm really excited now to glue it all together. Let me show you what it looks like. How cool is this? We have our frame. It's super long and thin. It's got really nice details. I chose to have this really nice piece of wood with this like feathery edge sticking out. And you can see the joints in the top looks really smart. And then the joints from the ends look nice also. So I'm excited to get it glued together. Move on to the next step. So I've just finished routing, which is the first time I've ever routed properly. I've done little bits of tests for like an hour here and there, but never properly on something that actually matters. And it was pretty <laughs> scary because I probably should have routed these out before I put them together. <clears throat> but, I don't know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> but I put it all together first and then routed it and it made it quite a lot more complicated, but it worked. And there it is. You could do this two ways. You could basically uh, get a small strip of wood and pin it on, and that would act as the same kind of method. But I just wanted it all to be one piece of wood and do it properly and really learn as I go. And it looks lovely. I know it came out nice. So there we have it. It's completely routed out. Your window pane will sit in there, and then I'll have a nice cover to go on the back side. This will be inside the barn. And then the outside is looking like that. And you've got this lovely decorative feature here, which I love. <laughs> and obviously it all needs sanding down and whatnot and oiling and yeah. But the next part is basically to cut the glass. Well, we ran out of sunlight last night, so we had to stop where we were, but it gave us thought and we were thinking, we don't want to have just plain glass in this window. We want it to be a feature. So we are going to find some stained glass to go in there. Theo's down there right now, finishing up the frame and it looks lovely. So this morning, I've taken the clamps off. I've put some tack nails in the corner and this thing is as rigid as anything. It's super strong, I'm very happy with it. And now I'm just gonna tidy it all up by doing some sanding with this nice sander that we got recently. And we've used it for so many things already before the actual use that we brought it for. <laughs> I've sanded it. It looks so nice. It's brought the grain out and I can't wait to stain it, but I can't, I can't stop putting my finger between the two pieces <laughs> of wood because you can't feel when it changes. The join is so nice now it's been sanded. Seamless. It was a little bit high, but that's a good thing. You want it higher than lower so you can sand it all into each other. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. And now oh, the moment great. of truth to actually see whether it fits. <laughs> 
I mean, I did measure it like three times. If it doesn't fit, I'm probably just going to snap this in half and walk <laughs> off. <laughs> it but will yeah. fit. It and looks... we measured it slightly smaller as well, so it will fit. It does look tight though. <laughs> there we like go. Like a glove. And it will actually sit back to about here. So that's where it's going to sit. Imagine that stained dark like the veranda. With stained glass in it. Ooh, How nice. nice does that look? And obviously there's a gap. I left a little bit of a gap at the top because it's narrower and not as high at the front as it is at the back. So I had to get it in somehow. Yeah. And then what I do is just shim this up on some blocks of wood. And then I guess we can point around it or I know what they use in modern windows. I think they use like spray foam around it and then maybe we could point over that i don't know i need to look into it but that is very promising it Exciting. looks like my first ever window <laughs> congrats I, I can't wait to see it with stained glass in and imagine the light that's going to come through there yes <laughs> Well, that was a fantastic end to the video, I've got to say. The window is so lovely and it's something that we've been thinking about ever since we got this barn back in 2017. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's video and we really look forward to seeing you on the next one.